Now what I want to do first is take some out and put it in a smaller container. I don't want to be dipping my brush into this. It would be fine for my brush. Gum Arabic is, like I said, the binder on watercolor paint. It's also um, that hard stuff that comes when you buy brand new brand new paint brushes and if you find that the the ends are all crispy and stiff that's because they've dipped them in, in gum arabic so a nice thing about gum arabic is if you have a brush that you want to store for a long time or you feel like it's fraying a little bit if you dip it in gum arabic and reform it with your fingers it will take the new form you just reform it let it dry set it down leave it alone for a while i would leave it for a few days but you could leave it as long as you want and then eventually come back and when you um go to break it again you're not breaking it as much as putting it into some water and just moving it back and forth and letting it soften on its own and then there's a very good chance that whatever strays happen to be going all wild you're able to reclaim them retame them back into their proper position on your brush. So that's a really great use for gum arabic. Also is that they can help you fix your brushes. There are oils on our fingers. You don't wanna get those oils onto the brush. I'm not concerned. I wash my hands so many times during the day. You really don't think there's a lot of oil on there. I'm also going to use these brushes and I'm gonna wash them, so I'm not concerned. But if you're concerned, if you spent a fortune, I mean like hundreds of dollars on a brush, you may want to avoid touching the end. Just a thought. If you find anything floating in here, don't worry about it. It's just the resin has come together because you've let it sit for too long or for a long time. Just give it a shake and it'll all go back to the way it's supposed to be. You don't have to strain it and you certainly don't have to throw it out. There's, there's nothing, it won't go bad on you. Okay, it's in those little shot glass. Now don't be confused, it's not for drinking. There are other companies you can get gum arabic from. You don't have to use Winsor Newton or Schminky. Um, Daniel Smith, I think they have one too, but you can find uh, specialty companies that are, are pigment companies and they have gum arabic in much larger quantities for a significantly reduced price. I'm going to paint in this bottom square and we're going to let it dry and we'll come back to it later. I'm just going to paint straight gum arabic right onto it. I don't know if you guys are here or not, but my husband is building me a beautiful chicken coop at the moment. Just outside my studio, which I know probably sounds ridiculous because why would you want chickens so close? But I love my chickens, so I don't mind that they're just outside my studio. Welcome to Watercolor by Scarlet. Today we're looking at some gum arabic. I have put six squares here, and I'm gonna walk you through these six, these, these six different uses for gum arabic. Gum arabic is a really nifty, fun thing. It's actually the binder. I have some in this little cap here. It's actually the binder in our watercolor. Uh, gum arabic with a little bit of honey and possibly some glycerin is what you'll find typically in professional, student grade and professional watercolors. Now, when you're working with watercolor and you find that it dries too fast, you can actually mix gum arabic with your paint and it will slow the drying time okay it'll make it it'll make it stay wetter longer so um there are a few things you want to consider here we don't want to use the gum arabic too with too much strength to it but this can be a lot of fun and very useful when you're when you're doing a big piece and you want to come back and forth or you want to uh, drop in more color, you want to be able to work more wet and wet and you don't want the paint to dry too quickly, just add some gum arabic in there. You want to add a little bit of water too. It's not pure gum arabic and paint, although you could do that, but be aware you want to try it and test it out first because you might have issues with cracking if you use too much gum arabic. Okay, so here. We can see how long that takes to dry. It's definitely wet. Now another thing it'll do is it'll take your paints, your, your paints which might otherwise be pretty strong or opaque, such as this one. See if I really layer this on here, I can make it really dark. Now this will be the same as this one. By adding gum arabic to the paint, you're going to make it more transparent. Your paints are already transparent, but if you want to improve that transparent quality, gum arabic will help. 
And again, it will slow the drying time. That's a really important thing to consider. Considerably more transparent. Now let's add more pigment. Let's see what happens. What do you think? So here we have uh, the same color, same color paint, and it's already dried. And we can see this is totally different. So I wanna add some gum arabic on top. So if you have a painting and you, the painting's all dry, let's say it's something like an orange and you want the, the rind of the orange to really stand out, you can glaze it with gum arabic. And this will give you a beautiful shine. So here we have the glazed version. And of course, then the original. Okay, next one, it was slow movement. Okay, I'm using some paint on this little brush. Half of this little circle has gum arabic on it. So let's see if we go over here. Versus going over here. Just to make sure it's not a lack of pigment, I'm gonna put a little drop in extra here. Wow, the water is moving. And the gum arabic is keeping it still, keeping the paint really still. So maybe you have two colors that are really close together and you want to paint one color while the other color is still wet, but you don't want that water to bleed in. Using gum arabic is an option. And we're gonna use these in the upcoming tutorials. I'm gonna use gum arabic more and more in my work to show you guys as the techniques progress. I just wanna go through the basics today, so I won't dive into too much of the details, but we're just gonna talk about all the basics. And the last two options are lifting out and lifting out one with the gum arabic under the paint and one with the gum arabic mixed into the paint. So with this one, I've mixed the gum arabic with the paint. I'm just taking the time to slowly paint it on. And now we're going to paint onto this little circle. All right, so we've got, um, it slows it down. It's transparent, more transparent. It casts a little bit of glaze. Actually, all three of these, you can see a beautiful shining glaze. Slows the movement. Isn't that lovely, huh? So I've got a paper towel and a fresh little bit of water, and I'm going to lift. You can use any brush. Right now, I'm just using the eradicator because I have it and I love it. This is with the gum arabic underneath the paint, whereas over here, we've mixed it into the paint and then just blotting it off with a clean 
paper towel. You don't want to be transferring old color back onto your painting. So I haven't spent enough time with this brush. I need to sit down and try to uh, and practice and see how small uh, lines I can make and all the different ways the brush will work. Especially if I'm going to be lifting out with it, which is the whole point. I want to be able to look at a piece and say, I can definitely lift that out using this brush or this brush is too big or it's too small. And how much water do I need? There's very little water on that. Didn't go all the way through though. Okay, so let's say we're going to do a larger spot. Okay, and to give you a reference, let's do it up here too, and let's say this side. Okay, so this is a lifting color anyway. It's not a particularly staining color in the first place. Also, I'm using the eradicator, which makes a big difference because this brush is made. It's designed to lift paint. But see how beautiful and crisp these edges are? Whereas here, the paper looks a little more used. It doesn't look quite so happy. And I'm, I'm reluctant to go back on that side even one more time because it looks like it's just starting to uh, pull away. Whereas over here, I see absolutely no difference, no change from this paper to this paper. So I'm quite pleased with how that looks, for sure. The shine is definitely there. It's subtle, very subtle, but it's there, it's beautiful. And it definitely moves the paint, moves it slower. It's a much more, um, much more attractive way to, to paint instead of just having it bleed out into nothing. So I'm also really happy with the way that looked. And it does slow the paint. Now the one thing about slowing the paint is if you're looking at the paint thinking, oh, I can see that shine, therefore it must still be wet. Uh, in fact, you could be wrong. And it could be that it simply looks wet and shiny because it has the gum arabic in it, on it, or under it. So those are the options. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this, and I do hope that you have learned something new about gum arabic. Thanks for watching. I'm Scarlett, and I'll see you in tomorrow's tutorial. Toodaloo!